Good day. Welcome to today's lecture on Lightwave's bullet dynamics. What you see in front of you is an example of a Kiva Planks destruction or Kiva destruction. Uh, Kiva Planks are a kid's toy. Well, they don't have to be a kid's toy, but they are a building construction tool. Um, and uh, what's kind of cool is that uh, bullet dynamics uh, can uh, break them like that. Now, a um, couple of things. First of all, uh, we are going to be doing this uh, lecture using lightwave bullets. So you need to understand a couple of things. So bullet is an open source physics engine. Uh, it's not just in lightwave. It's actually uh, got a plug in for Mayan soft Dimash, and it's also included in uh, Cinema 4D. And actually the first piece of software that I saw it in was Blender. And uh, the person that made it actually, uh, Erwin Cummins, um, he was a principal author. Naturally in the Blender community, there's always more than one person working on something but uh, he was actually a big proponent of Blender early on in fact if you were to uh, cruise the net um, on the YouTube site you would probably see tons and tons of Kiva destructions uh, with the bullet physics and some of them are just amazing I mean amazing yeah I've lost I don't even want to know the number of minutes we're going to go ahead and cover this in two parts. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of reinforcement of some of the clone tools. We're going to talk about what makes a good um, creation that Bullet Dynamics works with and a few of the uh, um, good things and bad things that Bullet Dynamics does and does not do. So let's go ahead and get started in Modeler. In Lightwave Modeler, what we're going to do is open up and press the A key. Make that uh, something that you get used to doing and do that so that way we got a nice size grid now a couple things about bullet dynamics they will give you pretty good results as long as you're not using an object that's too small or an object that's too large if you were to actually use an actual size kiva plank an actual kiva plank is about three quarters of an inch tall and about a quarter of an inch wide and maybe uh three or four inches long if you actually were to build something to size uh, too small. I actually tried that when I was originally putting together this lesson. And uh, yeah, that didn't result in bullet dynamics at all. In fact, it just went through my floor. Did fall apart. But, hmm, yeah. Another thing is that you want to build something that's semi-stable. So you want to have enough surface area so that the parts can sit on top of each other. Otherwise, what happens is if it's pretty unstable, bullet dynamics uh, will just kind of make your object fall down even before it gets hit. So building a tower is pretty much as simple as just starting with a block and the size of the block that you use really completely up to you the important thing though is that when we're building this what we're gonna do is we're gonna pay attention to our sizes why well I'm gonna pay attention to the sizes for this reason when I build a block I want to pay attention to how high that block is because when I start playing around with using the clone tool I want one block to sit on top of the next block which means I'm going to have to actually pay attention to how high my uh, my blocks are sitting. So if I want to build a block that say, let's go with something that is um, 0.2 meters across, a couple of hundred uh, millimeters, and let's say um, 0.4 meters tall, and we'll go with a one meter deep. So I got something that sort of is a plank looking kind of shape. And I will go ahead and uh, and make it so that it is not quite centered. I'll move it a little bit off to the right here. I'll take and uh, place it, or no, actually, that's the, moving it up. I want to move it off to the right. would help if I remember that X is the right and left motion. So I'll go ahead and move it out, say, like three meters. The thing, though, is that I'm doing this completely in the numeric pad. I turned on the box and click the N key, and I'm working on all of these controls right here paying attention to the fact that the height is 400 millimeters. How come that's going to help me? Well, because I'm going to have to take and I want to place this so that it's exactly sitting on the ground. Now, yeah, I know you can do the rest on the ground, but while you're building it, all you really have to remember is this. If your height is 400 millimeters, you want your center to not be at zero, because then that's 200 millimeters above and 200 millimeters below. I'll just take and make my center 200 millimeters. I could type in a 0.2 or I could have typed in 200 mm. Either way, that's going to sit perfectly on the ground. Now, why move it off center? Well, because I'm going to build a tower. And so if I'm going to build a tower, I'm going to use the clone tool to duplicate a ring of these blocks. Pressing C to access the clone tool. Or going into the modify, oops, multiply tab, learned if I get it right, and press the clone tool. 
and figure out how many of these I want. Well, if I'm going around in a circle, I would kind of have to decide, hmm, if I want uh, 12 pieces, that would be 30 degrees each for a shift. If I wanted uh, uh, eight pieces, that's 45 degrees each. And I always got to remember that I have one to start with. So if I want 11 more, that's going to give me 12 total. And I'm just going to have these go around in a circle that's going to be heading. And I'll put in 30 degrees. Now, if I click OK and I don't like what I get for some reason, I'm thinking, hmm, looks like it went up. How come? I wasn't paying attention to my numbers. And I'm going to hit Control Z because on my clone tool, I also had a nice little take and raise that I wasn't paying attention to. Oh. Well, Control Z. That's the beautiful thing. If you make a mistake or you create something that you don't like, you just undo it and then you do it again. And this time I get a nice little round circle that is not quite Stonehenge-ish, but you know, it's going to be a tower. I want to take and duplicate that. So I'm going to hit the C, the clone tool. Now this is where remembering how high the boxes were is going to help you. See, they were 400 millimeters tall, 0.4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some copies of this. Actually, I'm just going to make one copy right now. I'll come back and I'll make more once I test it out. But I'm going to make this go raise itself 400 millimeters. But at the same time, um, I want it to offset itself by just a little bit. Now, could I do 30 degrees again? Well, if I do 30 degrees again, I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to see that they're just going to go on top of each other. Each one got shuffled over 30 degrees. But if I want them to look like they're kind of staggered, I would probably do half that value. So I'm going to hit Control-Z. It's going to be your favorite tool when you're playing around with the clone tool, when you're just guessing. And I'm going to do a 15 degree rotation on this. One copy, 400 millimeters up, turn 15 degrees. That gives me a nice little stagger. Now that little stagger starts to, start, starts to sort of create something that uh, could be kind of towerish. Now, this tower is going to have lots of holes in it, so I'm not going to say it's perfect. But I could have done the exact same thing with as many copies as I wanted. I just was trying one. So I'm going to hit Control Z, go back to the clone tool, again C. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, so it's, each one's going to go up 15 degrees. That means the next one's going to be 30. That way it'll line up with every other row. How many pieces do I want in my tower? Well, it depends what you want for a tower. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say 19 more. And I'm going to click OK. And what that does is it gives me a nice, big, tall tower. OK, is that enough to smash? Sure, that would almost be enough to smash. Except that I'm thinking to myself, hmm, you know, I want something on the inside. Or maybe I want to have two towers. Or maybe I want to have three towers. Maybe I want to build something really big and obnoxious. Well, I could do that. But then that would make this lesson last really, really long. And at some point, you just have to say, hmm, that's enough. I get the general idea. All right, but I am going to do, well, one more thing. So I'm not quite done with my tower. What I want to do is I want to put another piece on the inside, kind of like an internal section. A couple of things, though, you have to be careful of. Uh, remember that Bullet Dynamics does not respond and actually will crash if you ever have any polygons that are ultra thin. In other words, don't have three dimensions. Everything has to have three dimensions. So be careful when you're doing your selections to make sure that you don't have any selections or any pieces of the clone that you made that are maybe missing a part. If it does happen. It's not something that, uh, that you know, I'm proud of, but it does happen to me. There's been plenty of times where I've made a selection and I thought I pressed that right bracket to select everything else, but I maybe missed something and did a duplication. And actually what you didn't see is a bullet dynamics crashed on me during the prep for this lesson. So I'm copying a piece on the bottom and I'm going to make an internal tower. I'm going to hit control. I hit the right bracket to select everything connected. I'm going to hit uh, control C to copy, control V to paste, hit the T to move forward. Here's another thing that I found is that if I'm building pieces and I do that copy and that paste thing, not a bad idea to double check, take a quick look at it up close and personal to make sure that you didn't miss any pieces. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say this is going to be my circle. I'm going to make 11 copies and it's going to be each one's going to rotate 30 degrees and click an OK. That's going to give me my base piece. I'm keeping them all kind of separated. Um, I found also one time when I was playing with this that if I put objects inside each other, um, I didn't like the physics that came out. Uh, it didn't look quite as uh, realistic as it should. So I am uh, going to go ahead and then select all of these pieces that I have here going through 
and selecting it from the top view and then pressing the right bracket to make sure that everything is that is joined is selected and then pressing the exact same process I did before go into the clone tool this time I think I'm gonna want 24 copies so I get 25 total each one's gonna raise himself up 400 millimeters or 0.4 of a meter and I'm gonna do the same partial rotation I did last time of 15 and this way I get a kind of an inside outside kind of tower kind of a two layer makes it look more castle-ish if I want it if that's a real word castle-ish and then I just do a quick little once over to make sure they don't have any uh, missing polygons in there so things don't crash on me when I do this all right one other last thing before you save your model not a bad idea to go into your layers panel and make sure that everything's named uh, this was planks too and uh, I actually already named them I named my first layer uh, planks I named the second layer floor and I named the third layer destructo that's that's the sphere I also sub patched it and gave it some textures Actually, in case you're wondering about the textures, under Planks 2, uh, the sphere just got kind of a battleship gray. The floor just got white, actually. And I turned the luminosity up on the floor. How come? Because uh, when I was playing around with, with uh, it in layout, I wanted it to be a little shinier. And, or not shinier, but a little brighter. By the way, turning up luminosity will turn down the uh, the blackness on your shadows. You get more of a gray shadow. Uh, and uh, the the wood that I used was simply a seamless texture that I had made in a previous lesson for this class. So I'm going to go ahead and save this and set it into layout. Save the object, set it into layout. 